Gordon Bernays was a short man who made an enormously large difference to America and to the world. He basically defined an entire new field that we today know as public relations. He was born in Europe and came over when he was one year old. Almost as soon as he graduated from Cornell University, he started out doing publicity work, only he did it in the old-fashioned way, which was you sort of put out a conventional press release and you told people to pay attention to your client. And he realized very soon that the old-fashioned way of doing things was old-fashioned. It wouldn't work in a new and vibrant America. was Freud's nephew. But in fact, the better way of characterizing it was that Sigmund Freud was Eddie Bernays' professional uncle, which meant that as five minutes after you met Bernays, he managed to drop into the conversation something about Uncle Sigmund. Sigmund Freud was a defining influence for Eddie Bernays in the sense that when Bernays took on a client, he thought about who the client was trying to reach and how he could understand the psychology of behavior of the American public to make it easier to have the public respond to what his client's interests were. He was promoting um, a lot of people in New York, like Enrico Caruso, the famous crooner. And he brought over this Italian crooner who was about to do a series of performances in America. And he was trying to make an all-American audience relate to somebody who was coming from Italy and that didn't care much about opera. So he had to make Caruso seem human and seem American. And he did this with lots of clients on Broadway and elsewhere where he was trying to take and shape Americans' interest to work for the, the clients that he was doing public relations. Woodrow Wilson realized that he had to rally the nation for this enterprise of World War I, and he had heard through various people, there was this young guy who had made a hit on Broadway in terms of what he could do for crooners and for actors and for others. And they thought, it, why couldn't that same thing work for something bigger, like going to war? So Bernays did everything from poster campaigns to newsreels to using all the latest technology to try to rally people. He made this a case of red, white, and blue. He saw the masses as easily rallied and easily manipulated. And while he tried to give it some grand sense of vision, what it really was doing was seeing people as naive and as malleable. If you could get people to support a war where our young sons were being killed overseas, you could get them to buy a product or vote for a candidate or do anything else that his clients happened to be paying him to get the public to do. Bernays' crowning campaign was at the beginning of the time that Edward Bernays was brought on to work for the American Tobacco Company. The mindset was that it was socially taboo for women to smoke. It was an unladylike thing. And so when American Tobacco Company hired him, they said, if we've got only half of the population, the male half, smoking cigarettes, if we could get women to smoke, we could double our sales. The first thing that Eddie Bernays did was he hired a disciple of his uncle Sigmund Freud's, a Dr. A. A. Brill, and he said, tell me why women aren't smoking now. And Dr. Brill said, it's very simple. It's a social taboo. If you could somehow make it seem that it was noble and socially acceptable for women to smoke cigarettes, they would no longer have a taboo against doing it. And Bernays said, that's brilliant. And he figured out the best way to do that is to take the holiday that represents sort of freedom and liberation, 
which was Easter, and create a great public event to rally women to thinking about cigarettes in a new way. So he got a bunch of debutantes on Easter Sunday to march down Fifth Avenue in New York and to, as they were marching, to light up their cigarettes. And he termed what they were doing, they were lighting what he called their torches of freedom. And the next day in newspapers all across America, there were what the press described as women shaking off the shackles of this social taboo and lighting up cigarettes that were an expression of their newfound freedom. It was so irresistible that an entire segment of the population changed their behavior overnight. But Edward Bernays came along half a century later and worked for the American Lung Association with a very effective campaign to wean Americans off the habit he had helped create for them. So he helped addict America to smoking cigarettes, he helped wean America off that habit, and he knew just what he was doing, and it's why many people are cynical today about what spinmeisters are doing. He said in his later years that had he known how dangerous cigarettes were, he would never have done what he did for American Tobacco Company, and that was a very compelling message that he delivered to the world until we went out there and saw the public records he left behind. He helped American Tobacco destroy the early public health evidence of just how dangerous cigarettes were. In the 70 to 80 years since Edward Bernays got going, there's never been a spin master in the history of America and probably in the world who has the kind of ongoing impact that Edward Bernays has today on everything from the way we buy, to the way we vote, to the way we think. Thank you.